Hi everyone, welcome to Bay Sunny. I'm your host Frank Malico. We begin with our weekly pitch. If you got a show idea out there, we'd love to hear from you. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Sunday. You see it there. Comment to the page and hopefully we can get in touch. Showtime now. You've heard the saying, you can't love another until you love yourself. Our next guest would agree. His latest book, Nothing Changes Until You Do, a guide to self-compassion and just getting out of your way. 40 short essays to rid your life of self-crippling doubt and pave the way a little bit of happiness. He's an expert in teamwork, emotional intelligence, and the powers of appreciation and authenticity. How am I doing? Pretty good. And uh, he empowers others through seminars. Let's meet the man behind the words, author Mike Robbins. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good to meet you. Yeah. So uh, it's true, isn't it? I mean, we got to just get off our dime and get motivated and figure it out, don't we? Yeah. Well, you know, I think most of the things that we do in life, you know, whether it's being here on the news, having this conversation, writing a book, being a parent. I mean, they're challenging, but I think the most difficult part of it often is dealing with ourselves. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, the relationship with ourselves is probably the most important human relationship that we have. And we don't spend a lot of time really focused on how do we treat ourselves? How do we think about ourselves? How do we talk to ourselves? It's so true. And, and we're so worried about what other people think. Yeah. You know, oh my God, he's going to think this, he's going to think yeah. that. When the end of the day, they, they're not thinking of you. No, I love, I love the saying, you wouldn't worry so much about what other people think about you if you realize how little they actually did. It's so right? true, you know. You go to an event, you go, oh, my God, did I say that to someone? Did I say that? And they're not going home thinking Right. That. Absolutely. They're yeah. thinking about themselves, right? So if we can actually spend a little more time in a healthy way, not about being self-absorbed or selfish, but in a healthy way focused on ourselves, how do we treat ourselves, it actually makes a difference in all our relationships and all the important things that we do. Now, you had an epiphany. Yeah. Your mom was passing. Mm -hmm. You spent some time with her. Uh, while well, she passed, I and uh, you kind of changed the way you look at things a little bit, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. So my mom died back in 2011. She died of lung cancer, and um, you know she got diagnosed in March, and she died in June, so it was pretty fast when mm -hmm. it happened. But I was staying with her in the time when she was sick, and I was out going for a run one morning, and you know, a pretty emotional time, as you can imagine. Absolutely. And I remember having this thought, I wonder what it's like for my mom knowing that she's gonna die. And as soon as I had that thought, the next thought was, wait a minute, I know I'm gonna die. I just don't live like that. And it was one of these, like it sort of caught me in the moment and I thought to myself, wow, what would it be like if I lived my own life, if we all lived our lives more aware of our own death? Not to freak us out, but in yeah. reality, because we don't know what's gonna happen. You know how many days you live in a, in a good life? I don't know. You my grandfather lived to be 100. It's right. a little, it's like 33,000 days. Right. So every day is so precious. And you don't, you don't think, oh, just whatever. I just want right. to get through the day. And you gotta start thinking that. What can I do today to make my life more fruitful, more enjoyable, right? Absolutely. A mentor of mine years ago said it to me, and when I had that thought with my mom, it would kind of crystallize. He said, Mike, if you lived your life every day more aware of your own death, you would live very differently. So it's really about you know, embracing the moment. And I think nowadays it's so challenging for us because we're so busy. We've got so many different devices. Mm -hmm. We've got things going on. Life is moving 100 miles an hour. How can we actually stop, slow down, take a step back, and appreciate what's going on around us? Hence the book. Yes. How do we nurture ourselves? Yeah. And why are we so afraid of change? I think change, fundamentally most people, myself included, seek and fear change at the same time. So even good change, you think about good changes that happen in our lives, you get a new job, new relationship, new house, whatever, something positive, even that can be upsetting because it's different. I mean, sometimes like my computer guy will come and upgrade the system on my computer and immediately I'll say, I don't like it. And he goes, no, it's better. And I say, no, no, it used to be green, now it's blue. It totally stresses me out because we're used to what we're used to. And so it's change upsets us in that way, but if we start to embrace it, I mean, look, change is constant. It's happening all the time, but if we can get more comfortable with it, then we can navigate it more effectively. Now, you were a Major League Baseball player, mm -hmm. played with the Kansas City Royals mm -hmm. for three years in their minor league system, yep. got injured, yep. um, and you kind of use, you were a pitcher. Yep. I, I remember I, I watched on YouTube where you said, how would you like to be a pitcher? And you get pulled <laughs> out of a game <laughs> yeah. where everyone singles you out. No one talks to you in the dugout, but you kind of wrap your arms around that during your seminars, too, yeah. right? Well, I grew up here in the Bay Area, Skyline High School in Oakland. I got drafted out of high school by the Yankees. I didn't end up signing with the Yankees because I got a chance to play at Stanford. I know you're a Cal guy, but yeah. I hope I'm you not going to hold it against you. <laughs> I'd so, go too. <laughs> and, then, and then I get drafted by the Royals. I signed with the Royals. Unfortunately, I got injured when I was in the minor league, so my career ended you know, before I really got to the big leagues and went on for a long time. But I learned a lot as a baseball player. And one of the things when I was pitching, you know, the hardest part about pitching is when you don't do well and they stop the game and come and take you out. It's a pretty humiliating experience. Sure. But I try to bring that into when I'm speaking and when I'm delivering seminars from the perspective of the hardest part of pitching, Frank, for me, wasn't actually the game. 
it was dealing with myself, especially after I failed. When I'd be sitting in the dugout and thinking, oh, I screwed up, oh, nobody likes me, oh, I'm terrible. All those thoughts in my head. And so the question then becomes, it's not about pitching, it's about life. How do we change that conversation in our head to much more kind, much more compassionate instead of so critical? And part of it's just being in the game. Just show up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Just being there. I mean, that's where, the, that's where life actually happens is on the field, right? If we're sitting on the sidelines, can't do much. Well, the book is great. It's 40 short essays. And I'm just going to read some of the chapters. Just show up. Give yourself permission to, uh, to say. Trust your gut. Um, everything in there is just a, a little anecdote about your life that you can apply to your own life and hopefully live a more fruitful and uh, fulfilling life, yeah. right? That's right. the idea. Hey, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Thanks for really having me. Really appreciate it. If you'd like more information about nothing changes until you do, log on to mike-robbins.com. That's mike, a little hyphen there, robbins.com. Back with more Bay Sunday right after the break. Stay there, folks.